Okay. this works tonight I can see comments turn on the light and no all right hello everyone it's Nicole Steele of a joyful stamper here we go it's working slow everybody must be on the internet Okay. All right. There we go. Got it up. All right. Welcome. If you are joining me live or if you're watching the replay, I'm happy to have you watching. And I'm Nicole Steele, the owner and the creator and the designer behind the Joyful Stamper. And I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And tonight I have been going live every night this week at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And I've had a variety of projects, boxes, bags. Last night it was tea bag holders and K cup holders using different um, celebration sets. So tonight I am working with the granddaddy of all the celebration sets, and it is the coveted little ladybug set. The reason it's so coveted is because it requires a $300 order to get it for free. You can't buy it. So that's a little steep for a lot of people. So um, yeah, some people are pulling orders together to get it. And I have two cards made with this adorable set. It is stinking cute. It is. So it's worth trying to get. But tonight we're going to make these two cards. And I'm going to start with this one right here. So let's get to it. And also, if you would be so kind to share this video, I actually have two packs of the Golden Honey Specialty Designer Series paper. This was a celebration offering and it sold out a couple weeks ago. So there is no more available, but I have some and I have two packs of it. So if you share this video and you type shared in the comments, hit the share button, then type shared in the comments so I can see your name. I will draw over the weekend a name or two names actually because I have two packages of this and to give away. So and I would appreciate that so much. Thank you. All right, so let's get started with this cute ladybug card. We're going to start with balmy blue card stock, five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Score down the middle at four and a quarter. And I don't know if you knew this, but if you take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of card stock and you cut it in half in either direction, you will get two standard size cards out of that sheet of card stock. So you can cut it either at four and a quarter or you could cut it at cut it at five and a half. Now I'm taking a piece of this Pleased as Punch designer series paper and I'm using the raindrop pattern. And on the back are those cute umbrellas. And I die cut it with a new um, die set that's coming out April 1st. It's called the Ornate Layers Dies. And it is stunning in its detail. I did a sneak peek video of it last Monday night and it's uploaded to YouTube if you want to catch that and see what it's all about. So I'm going to glue that to my balmy blue card base just like that. And I just love the little stitching detail around the edges there. Then what we are going to do is I already went ahead and stamped some of my ladybugs so that I wouldn't be sitting here coloring multiple images because you can see I colored quite a bit of this card. But I colored this little cutie right there and I'm going to finish that one. And I have that little ladybug there and I have this flower. And they were all stamped from here. There's the flower, there's my ladybug, there's another one, and there's the third one that I used. And I'm going to be using this sentiment here, spread your wings and fly. I thought that would be a really good card for a high school graduation. So I will show you. You're going to learn some tips tonight on coloring with your Stampin' Blends. All right, so let's get started. I am going to color his belly. I colored his wings in dark cherry cobbler, or excuse me, dark real red. And this was done with dark basic black. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
a light basic black stamp and blend and I'm gonna use the bullet tip side and I'm gonna color his belly by just quickly coming in from the outside of his belly in and I'm not worried about the white space that's all gonna get covered all right and I'm gonna leave that uncapped and then the next thing I'm going to do is take my dark basic black also the bullet tip and I'm going to go over the light basic black that I had already laid down previously. Then I'm gonna pick up my light basic black again and go over it some more, blending it all out. And then I'm gonna take a dark smoky slate marker and I'm gonna go over all of it just like that. And you can color over it as many times as you want. You're not going to ruin the paper. You're not going to contaminate your marker tips. It will, however, bleed through to the other side, so make sure you have scratch paper down there. Okay? And then what I took was a color lifter. And this is meant to do exactly what it says, lift the color off of whatever you're coloring. And I'm going to use the bullet tip, and I'm going to go in a circular motion on his belly just to lighten that a little bit, to give it a little bit of a shadow or not a shadow, um, just a lighter effect, just to make it look a little more dimensional. And now I'm gonna put the caps back on, but oops, it looks like I need to color his little hands here and his little legs. He's so cute. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I'm gonna take a dark balmy blue. Actually, I want the light balmy blue. Let me grab that, not dark, forget I said that. We want a light balmy blue Stampin' Blend and I'm gonna draw around him like a halo. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I cut him out, I wanted him to be a little bit more noticeable instead of fading into my background. So I'm gonna draw around it. This is light balmy blue. And you can go around it a couple times. Just like this. And then I'm going to take my color lifter. I'm going to take my color lifter and where the edge of that is, I'm going to flick outwards. Or you can color in circles, whichever is most comfortable for you. And that's going to blur that harsher line there so that it gets a little bit softer, a little bit blurry, a little bit more muted. And it'll just give him a real soft halo. The other ladybugs all have that too. All right, and then I'm gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna cut him out. And as I cut him out, I'm cutting around that bl balmy blue halo that I cut, or that I colored around him. There are dyes available for this set. It was an out of publication um, product coordination release Stampin had uh, earlier this month and it's available until March 31st so there are dies available to cut a number of these images out in this stamp set however I'm not one to buy every single die that comes out now this flower I love how this flower turned out so so pretty and the colors I used I'm gonna start with light pineapple punch and I'm gonna finish this petal here. So I'm using light, pap light pineapple punch to color in the entire flower petal. <laughs> Brian, hello. <laughs> He's actually in the room with me. So light pineapple punch and then I'm going to go ahead and take a dark pineapple punch and starting in the center of the flower petal, I'm going to work my way out. And then I'm going to take, go back to the light pineapple punch and color over it to blend those two. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with dark mango melody. And I'm going to add a little bit, bit of it from the center of the flower out. And then I'm going to take dark pineapple punch and I'm going to color over that line 
to smooth it out. Oh, I love that look. Love those colors together. They're so cheerful. I love coloring with Stampin' Blends. Now I'm going to take Light and Dark Granny Apple Green and just color in the stem here. Okay, I'm going to come in with the Dark Granny Apple Green. And then I'm going to use this to blend it out a little bit. This is the light granny apple green now. And then I'll go back with the dark granny apple green and just add some more there. I like that. And there's really no right or wrong. You can just do it until you are happy with the look. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this flower out. Now, of course, you can stamp these things right on your card, but I like putting dimensional, cutting them out and then putting dimensionals on them. I think it adds a lot of life to the card. And I can't wait to send this one to somebody. I love the bright, cheerful colors. I've been doing a lot of fussy cutting lately. It's one of my favorite things to do. I find a little bit relaxing. Now, I'm gonna try and get that white space out right there in that flower, but that's entirely optional if you're not comfortable fussing cutting in quite that much detail. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to put this card together. And what I have here are some stitched nested label die cut pieces and I die cut them with Whisper White. These are actually part of the Free as a Bird suite or Bird Ballad suite that's in the, the big catalog, the annual catalog, and they all have some nice stitching detail around them and they, they nest just like they say. And I'm going to glue them onto my card just like this and trim off the excess. So I'll start with the largest one first using some liquid glue and I'm going to put it right about there on my card and you can use your grid paper to line things up to make sure they're straight. Use those grid lines rather than trying to eyeball stuff. Most people find it difficult to just eyeball things when they're trying to get it straight. So use those grid lines to your advantage. I always like to keep a pack of grid paper on hand just for that. I also use it to line up my stamps and I'll show you how I use them to line up my sentiment stamps in a minute here when I go to apply that onto my block. And then we'll add this teeny tiny one. Just like that. Okay. I'm feeling in a pretty chill mood tonight. Not wild and crazy. When I'm done with this, my daughters are coming downstairs and we're gonna watch the Hunger Games for about the 50 bajillionth time. But they're good. The books are good too. I read the books before I watched the movies, which is what I always do. Because generally speaking, I enjoy the books more than I enjoy the movies. Okay, now I'm just gonna cut off the excess. Right there. And right there, okay. And I don't save those scraps, I throw those out. Now it's time to put our little buddies on our card. They're gonna look so cute when we're done. Okay, now for this flower, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little Stampin' Dimensional right there on the leaf. And now I'm gonna peel everything off and I'm gonna add my flower to my card first since it is the largest elements okay and I'm gonna position it right about there on my card okay and I'll peel off the liners on my other little critters and we're gonna put them just like this and this guy's gonna flip right there now let's stamp the sentiment and I will show you the trick on the grid paper. So 
Line your block up using the lines on this grid paper. Then take your sentiment and line it up on the block, also using the grid lines that you can see underneath it. I'm gonna pull this block towards me a little bit just so I can truly get it straight. Let me see here. Okay, there you go. So you can see, put your block on there first and line it up with the grid lines, then put your stamp on there and line some of the words up on that stamp with those grid lines that you can see through your block. Now I'm gonna take a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad and ink that up and I'm gonna stamp the greeting right down here in the corner, the lower right. Spread your wings and fly. Oh, look at that. But there is a finishing touch. I thought this card was done, but then my eye spied these clear and glitter epoxy shapes, drops, whatever you wanna call them. Some of them were in the shapes of little raindrops and I thought, how fun would it be to put them on here like little dewdrops, right? Yeah, it's a genius idea if I do say so myself. And I'll just put a few on there. There's such a subtle little touch, but when you notice it, it's a wow. It is a wow. And I'm gonna do one more right at the top here, just like in my original card. And there you go. Look at that. Isn't that cute? That is so stinking cute. Ooh. You know, and if you're one of the people whose names I draw to win that golden honey paper that is sold out, I might just slip this card in with your prize package. So be sure to share the video and type shared. Don't forget that part. All right, we're gonna move on to card number two. Let me set this aside. Get my supplies here. I try to be organized. Okay, so I'll pull this card out for you again. This one I went with some unusual colors. Um, soft sea foam, balmy blue, and this also, yes, I colored with Stampin' Blends again. And this is so saffron right here. But And then I sponged around it with some soft suede ink because I just, I love that shabby, dusty kind of look to this. So let's get started making that. We're starting with a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of soft sea foam cardstock scored down the middle at four and a quarter. And I'm going to fold it and crease it with my bone folder. Okay, so we have that. And this is gonna be a top folding card. So we're gonna have it opening that way. And the next thing we are going to do is stamp these little, this little line of ladybugs right there. I just think they're adorable. That little one right there, I almost just wanna tickle his little belly. Although I know you wouldn't in real life tickle a ladybug. I know you wouldn't. All right, let me find my stamping block. And this is another way, another um, instance where I'm going to use my stamping grid paper to line up my ladybug stamp. Okay, let me pull this closer to me just to see if I got it right. I did. Okay. And I'm going to use mint macaron ink. And I'm going to stamp a border of ladybugs all around this card. Okay. Here we go. I'm freehanding it. And I'm not too concerned about going off the cardstock, okay? Because I'm, I'm not going for perfection when I make this card, or any card. I want it to look nice, but perfection is, it's the enemy here when you're creating. It, it really is. Because you get too hung up on that. Now here you will see, if I try to ink this up and stamp it again, these two critters are going to go right over that. Now that I definitely don't want to happen. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scratch paper, grab some, and I'm actually going to cover those guys right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp off a few times to make sure all the ink is off of this stamp. And I'm going to use my ink pad and just tap those two far left ladybugs into my ink pad. So they're the only ones that are going to have ink. The other two are hanging off the edge of my ink pad. Check it. Okay, just those two have ink. I've got my scratch paper protecting that part of my card, and now I'm going to go ahead and stamp them. There you go. Just like that, it's, it's called selective stamping. All right, and now for 
a fun look. Let me see if I have it in here. Yes, a blender pen. If you've never... Hi, Jay. <laughs> you are the only one on here tonight besides Brian that I can see. So I'm stamping by myself, kind of. So if you've never used a blender pen before, it has a special liquid in it. And when you go, you can use it to color. And all I wanted to do with this one is just slightly blur these ladybugs. I don't know why. I can't say why I want to do it. I just know that I like the look of it. So I'm just scribbling it over. And you can't see the solution. It's clear. Another way I like to use my blender pen is when I stamp a greeting. I like to lightly go over it with this blender pen just to blur it a little bit. And it gives it this nice distressed vintage look that I really like. Okay. So I'm just going over making my ladybugs a little bit greener by doing this. But you have to be careful not to go over your paper too much with this because your paper will actually start to pill just like, just like your sweaters do. This will do it too if you overwork your paper. So there we go. I shabbied up my ladybugs and now I am taking this piece of So Very Vellum. This is in soft sea foam. It's beautiful, it's embossed, so it's got texture on it, so you just wanna touch the cards. I love that. And I've got some snail adhesive, which is always a good choice with that. Then what I did is I took a piece of soft sea foam cardstock and I used, you can either use a circle punch to get those circles die cut or cut into your project or you can use I used stitch so stitched shapes dies and I just ran it through my die cut machine with this to get those three circles then I took an embossing folder and this is a new one that's coming out April 1st called ornate was it ornate floral 3d embossing folder and I ran it through to get that that texture on there now before I add it I'm going to sponge it up to distress it with some soft suede ink and a Stampin' Sponge. Now, this Stampin' Sponge is actually, um, when they come in a package, you get three of them, and they're huge. So I cut each one into eight sections. So if you order a package of Stampin' Sponges, you actually can get like 24 out of them. So there you go. Um, just distressing that, shabbing it up. We'll do that to my card, too. So who is over this quarantine? I'm a homebody and I'm over it. Totally over it. When I'm told I can't go somewhere, that's when I wanna go somewhere. I have this little rebellious streak in me. It's awful. I've had it ever since I was a teenager. Oh, I always wanna do the opposite of what someone tells me to do. I don't because I'm 44 and I know better and I'm a Christian and I love Jesus so I know better but it's in me it's in me it's bad so I'm going to take some snail and I'm going to run it down the back of this piece there you go it's just like that and I'm going to adhere it to this so very vellum vellum there we go. And now, the reason I did that before attaching the vellum to my card is so I could flip it over and I could see where I could put my adhesive so that it won't show. So yeah, when I first graduated high school, I went to a Christian college and because I wanted to do the opposite of what everyone told me to do, I didn't do very well there. So then I transferred to another college and it wasn't a Christian college and because I wanted to do the opposite of everybody, I was a good girl. Oh, yeah a weird little fact about me all right probably more than you wanted to know so now we are gonna get on with this card and we're gonna get our little ladybugs and I did not color them red because I didn't want to and red la ladybugs wouldn't have looked good with this no instead I colored them balmy blue with a little bit of daffodil delight washed over them so, and I'm gonna show you how I did it on this ladybug. So I started with light balmy blue. And this time I am just coloring their belly and their arms and legs. There we go. 
I just can't get over how stinking cute these little buggers are. And I'm, oh yeah, I'm going to color this part too. Okay. Then I'm going to take, I don't think this is Knight of Navy. I don't want that. I want balmy blue. Yes. Here we go. This is the dark balmy blue. This is the one I want. And I'm going to go over what I just colored with the light balmy blue, but I'm not completely covering it. Not completely. And then I'm going to take my light balmy blue and I'm going to go over it again. And that just blends those two colors together. There we go. Okay. I like the little white left in the middle of his belly. It's cute. Okay, now we're going to take um, the Light Daffodil Delight marker. And I'm just lightly flicking on the outsides there. And of course, if you remember from your grade school days, what do yellow and blue make? They make green. That's right. So it gives just a really soft hint of green that I think looks really good with the soft sea foam. And now, you guessed it, I'm going to cut this little critter out. I did not give him a blue halo like the other ones. Okay. Is it cut around his antennas. And you might think, oh, his little antennas, that's going to be so hard to cut around. It's not. Turn your paper, not your scissors. Can you see my scissors aren't really moving? I'm moving the paper. And the blades on these paper snips are sharp enough that you can do that. All right. Now we're going to put Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of those so we can attach them to our card. Because so we're going to lift them up. Oh, my mind is spinning with what else I can make with this set. Okay. Let's put them on like that. I love how he's like peeking over his shoulder. Like he's so shy. So, so shy. Now that flower was colored with a dark Daffodil Delight blend and I went over it with a light Highland Heather blend. So yeah, I, I did. I used a lot of blends on these cards, but I don't know. I like them. Honestly, more and more I'm realizing I'm not about quick and simple cards. I enjoy making fussy, layered, distressed cards and... I'm happier with the result when I do stick with that style, so that's what I'm going to do. And if you watch me and watch my videos, then hopefully you will learn to love that style too and see that you, you can do it. They look complicated, but they're not. They're not. When you have somebody showing you, they're not complicated. So I'm going to use Happy Birthday, and I'm going to ink, uh, ink it up with Early Espresso. And I'm going to stamp it on this skinny little strip of so saffron cardstock, just like that. And it's, I think it's a half inch wide. I don't know how long, I just pulled a scrap out of my scrap bag and it worked. Now I am, I'm gonna let the ink dry for a little bit and I'm going to take some linen thread and I find it holds its shape better when I actually double it up. So I have the linen thread and I'm gonna fold it in half like that. And here's another trick. If you want to save on your linen thread or on your ribbon, tie it while it's still on the spool. That way you don't misjudge how much you actually need and end up cutting off several, cutting off and, and, and wasting several inches. Okay, so now I'm going to adjust this, the bow. Whoop, what did I do? Let's try this again. Do over. A lot of times I do fuss with the bows that I tie to get them the way that I like them. There we go. Then I'm going to snip it. There we go. And here's another thing I like to do. I like to curl my sentiment strips. I just give them, just bend them a little bit. And you don't even have to use a bone folder if you don't want to. You can just use your fingers to bend it into shape. And we are going to put some mini dimensionals on the back of this, just like this. A sheet of these mini dimensionals goes a super, super long way. 
because there's so many in the package. I think you get two or three sheets of them. And I'm gonna put this right here on the card just like that. See how it's wavy like that? Oh my gosh, I get so excited about this stamping stuff. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so I'm putting a glue dot on and I'm gonna stick my linen thread bow on just like that. And there my card is completed. Completed. Let me bring out the other ones that I did tonight. There we go. I think I say that too much, don't I? Here we go, there we go. All right, there's the cards we made tonight. Aren't they adorable? And they use this little ladybug set. All right, so again, this isn't something you can buy. It's a th with a $300 order only until March 31st. Um, if you can't swing that, get a group of your friends together and place the order together and use all use this host code so that way um, it will all get credited to you and then you can earn that. And remember to share this video too because I will draw in two names to win a sampler pack of this Golden Honey Specialty Designer Series paper. This is a celebration item that's been sold out for a couple weeks and you can't get it, but I have I have some left, so I've got two packages there. So share the video, type shared in the comments, and I am going to be announcing a couple special things next week in my newsletter, which goes out every Tuesday. If you would like to subscribe to the Joyful Stamper Stampin' News newsletter, just go to my site, thejoyfulstamper.com, and there is a link at the top or a little menu option at the top to subscribe to my newsletter, and I promise you'll love it. You'll also get a, an exclusive PDF emailed to you when you sign up, and it is a card that is not published anywhere. Nobody else is going to see it but my newsletter subscribers. So thank you so much for joining me tonight or watching the replay. I really appreciate it, and have a good weekend, guys. Bye.